Hey everyone, uh, today I have a tip to share with all my fellow puzzle lovers. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you have at least one puzzle in your closet that has a missing piece or two. Uh, whether it's lost down an air vent or vacuumed up, never fear, I am going to show you how to replace any piece you can't retrieve successfully. Now, this puzzle has uh, four missing pieces. Unfortunately, they found their way into the belly of a puppy, so there is no hope of retrieving them. Um, you only need a few things for this project. You are going to need a few of these paint swatches that you can get for free from Home Depot. You'll need a very strong glue. Personally, I like to use this clear Gorilla Glue, uh, the kind that won't bubble up. Super glue works too, but I don't recommend it because of the potential mess it can make. You'll also need some thick sketchbook paper or moleskin paper. I don't recommend notebook paper because those blue lines can be a problem and it also doesn't hold up to sandpaper very well. You will need a regular graphite pencil and some colored pencils. I have a variety of colored pencils um, so I can match colors better, but don't worry if you just have basic colors. I have seen videos on YouTube where people draw the most amazing art with just red, yellow, blue, and black and white. Um, you can also draw skin tones with red, orange, yellow, and brown if you have no skin tone colored pencils. Naturally, you'll need a pencil sharpener on hand because detail is important when you're drawing such a small piece of art. You'll need some scissors and sandpaper or uh, emery cloth with a fairly high grit. Um, unfortunately, I don't know the grit count on this particular cloth because I actually bought a variety pack with multiple grits. But I prefer the cloth over sandpaper because it bends more smoothly, which is important if you have to sand out the inside of a female piece. And last but not least, this is a very strange one, but if you really want to preserve your artwork, you are going to need a bottle of clear, glossy top coat nail polish. This one's Revlon. Not that it really matters, so long as it's firm when it dries and not too tacky. Now let's get started. Now first of all, I've sort of dismantled the puzzle a bit so I can easily reach the areas of the puzzle I need to get to. First you're going to want to slide your sketchbook paper under the puzzle. This can be a bit tricky, so you have to be patient and keep the puzzle pieces pressed down. You can kind of lift them up piece by piece and wiggle it under any stubborn ones. Just kind of spiral it in there. There we go. I have two others right there, right there. It's very helpful if you have a printed image of your puzzle, which actually comes with the box, so that you can get a clear picture of what your puzzle pieces need to look like. And if you don't have one, that's totally fine. The picture on the box will work just as well. Now let me zoom in and give you a better view of what I'm doing. First you're going to take a basic pencil and outline the shape of your missing piece. Be sure to get as close to the corners and curves as possible, or you'll end up getting a shape that doesn't fit. Next it's important to decide if you should start with your brightest colors or your darkest colors first. Keep in mind that if you have a piece that's mostly dark, you'll want to color in the lightest parts first so the pigment stays bright. But if you're working on a brightly colored piece like this one, it's good to do the deeper, bolder colors first, and then go in with bright colors second. Remember that colored pencils sometimes take lots of layering to get the right shade, so be patient if you have a lot of details to draw. And remember to keep your colored pencils sharp. This process can be a bit tricky, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes. You may even feel like redrawing your puzzle piece on the same piece of paper so that you can compare them side by side and decide which one you should keep. If you're replacing a blue sky piece, you've basically won the lottery in easiness. Once you have your piece the way you want it, remove it from underneath the puzzle and gently touch up any edges your pencils weren't able to fill in. Just make sure not to go over the line and accidentally change the shape of your puzzle piece. 
Now, once you have that done, you're going to take about four or five paint swatches and glue them together. In my experience, most puzzles are all the same thickness, so five is the perfect number. It will be a little thick, but that's okay since you'll be sanding a bit of the bottom as well as the sides. Now make sure you don't have too much glue uh, built up between the layers and spread it kind of thin. So this is why I don't like using super glue. <laughs> Once you have them pressed together, you're going to want to find something heavy to put on top of the stack while it dries. Um, also, make sure to place the cards on something that you don't mind getting glue on in case uh, some glue leaks out of the sides. I'll be using the back side of this emery fabric. Okay. And once that's completely dry, you'll be able to cut out your artwork and glue it to the top and let it dry again. You don't want to cut out the shape by itself at this point. You definitely want to leave a little bit of white so that you can protect your artwork from any glue that might come out of the sides. I will worry about that later because my cards are still drying. Now I have a few pieces here that are already finished. Kind of like how baking shows put a cake in the oven and they instantly pull out another cake and it's already done. Bam. Now this next step is very important. Once your card is dry, your image is dried on there and solid, you're going to take your clear nail polish and paint a very fine layer over your art. Uh, this will protect your artwork from getting smudged. Now with these two, you could tell I haven't put any gloss on this one yet. It's still very matte, but this one has a very fine, thin layer of nail polish on it already. You can see how the glue and the nail polish don't really react well together, so I should have left a little bit more paper on these curves to prevent them from bubbling like that. But they're still connected to the cardboard, so I'm gonna call it good. Now you have to make sure this top layer of nail polish is 100% dry before you go any further, or the polish will become sticky from the warmth of your fingers when you're sanding out the shape of your puzzle piece. So we are going to take our scissors and cut out our puzzle piece. Not so close that it bends or damages the piece, but um, not so far away from the edges of your artwork that you'll be sanding away at the piece for an eternity. This can be a little difficult to cut. Ooh, my goodness. Let me put a glossy taco on this piece for a moment so that by the time I'm done with this one, I can start on this next one. Remember, 100% dry. You don't want to get impatient and think, oh, this is good enough, because it will get tacky and hard to work with. Also, you might want to hold it up to the light and make sure there aren't any air bubbles in there, or that's going to be a problem for you too. Let's get those in. Let's set that aside. Now, before I start on this piece, which is obviously all male ends, I wanted to give you an example of what to do if you're ever trying to sand down a female piece. I outlined another puzzle piece right here. This can be a little tedious, but there's a high chance that you'll end up sanding out a bit of the corners that house it. That's okay, but don't try to cut the shape out with scissors. Instead, you can just cut a small sliver right into the center and maybe cut a couple triangles to uh to get to that sliver and with that little sliver 
your sandpaper will be able to work its way into the curve perfectly. And that slice will very easily give way. Just to try to cut it more central than I did. I kind of got close to the end there. You'll have something a little bit more like that. It makes it a lot easier to work into the center if you have that little slit in there. It just takes some time and a little bit of practice. So if you want to work on a male piece or a flatter piece, like this little guy, um, honestly, that is probably the simplest piece you could ever hope to sandpaper. A lot of flat areas, um, not a lot of indents. So if you're working on multiple pieces, start with your easiest ones first as practice, and then work your way to pieces that have multiple female parts. So time for a bit of a close-up, Mr. DeVille. If you need to get smaller scissors just to get a little bit closer, that's totally fine. Now remember to be very delicate while cutting this, otherwise you might end up cutting right through your art if you're not very wary of, of when to stop cutting. Okay, now just fold this in half and always try to use that nice curved edge. It's pretty pliable if you use emery fabric and just be patient. Also, try not to put your fingers on top of the art too often. Um, you could end up sticking your fingernail into the nail polish or you know, denting it as much as you can hold on to the sides, you know, do that as often as possible to prevent damaging your artwork, because that can happen. Or at least be very aware of where your fingernails are if you do have to hold it on top. Don't don't dig like this. Just keep it flat. I think this is actually one of the lower grit sandpapers, so I'm going to grab one of the rougher ones in my arsenal. And the great thing about emery board is it is so easy to just tear. So it tears in a fairly straight line. So I highly recommend it. I'll use this finer grit when I'm actually getting right to the edges. And a few tips while sanding. You don't want to be too aggressive while working around the edges of the male pieces, um, or it can actually cause the layers to split apart and fan out. But if you do notice some fraying, that's okay. Just take some of your nail polish and uh, use it to glue the piece back together, kind of press it together. But remember to let it dry fully before you start sanding again, or you're gonna have a big mess on your hands. Now, without getting too much dust on my camera, I do want to show you that you can smooth out the end pieces in a nice swivel manner, but you also want to make sure you're not going too high up on the art, and you also want to keep kind of sanding away at the bottom. Now it's okay if you kind of get the bottom of it trimmed away, because you'll end up with something like this. Now the bottom side does look a little ugly, and I did practically sand away almost an entire swatch sample. You could see it, see it was a purple one. I did just kind of file away at them, so they'll, they'll curve down a little bit, but it's it's just, it works perfectly fine. Just remember to constantly check and make sure you are sanding all the sides of the piece evenly, or you might end up over sanding one side and your pieces won't fit in the puzzle properly. No, see, oh gosh, you can't really see, but this one's starting to lift upward, upwardly. 
and I don't want that to happen. So at that point, if you have your art going upward, you kind of just want to sand down. Don't even bother sanding back and forth or up. You'll notice that I keep wiping my hands to keep them from getting too wet because that's what's going to make the nail polish tacky. So you definitely want to keep your hands as dry as possible. One hour later. Okay, so as these neck parts narrow, this is going to get a lot more flexible. So you're definitely going to want to have a very strong hold while you're sandpapering. And you might end up actually sandpapering a bit of your own nail, so just be prepared for that. But you can see how this one's already starting to op open up. But so long as this front part is, you know, being smoothed flat on the surface, it's okay if you have to, like, file upward on the other side and kind of get rid of some of this excess. Just get a good confident grip on it before brushing it back and forth. You're never going to want to be too vigorous once it gets to this sort of delicate state. So it still has some white edges and I'm going to have to file those down. Sometimes you can look at it straight on and it looks right but it won't fit and that's when you want to kind of go at a bottom angle and smooth out that underside, like I said. Keep testing it in its spot to see if it fits. And if it doesn't, just keep working on it. Now this one's actually kind of getting a bit irritated. I'm being a little hasty with it. And of course, the more your hands are on it, the more it's gonna heat up. And I'm starting to see a few little bubbles. So what I really wanna do at this moment is I'm going to stop with this piece and I'm going to glue these like little fanned out areas to, back together. And I'm going to let that sit while it dries. And then I'm going to flip it over and do a little layer of top coat on top once that's dry. So I think I'll pick back up on this one tomorrow because I have done this before where I was impatient. And you can see these huge bubbles that appeared in the piece and you can see how warped it is because I was not patient and I put a second top coat on top of a first after only a couple hours of waiting when it really should have been about like a whole day. This one has a much better chance of surviving as a piece. I just have to get it thin enough to fit properly. This piece did in fact fit and I was very proud of it but the bubbles just bothered me so much that I just wasn't gonna let it slide. It fits well though. One more try should do it. I really hope I don't have to do this again. But here's a few more examples of what could go wrong if you're not careful. This piece, for example. I did this one and it turned out okay, but I was kind of unhappy with it because when I put it down in the puzzle, it actually looked far more orange than pink. So that's kind of more what I was going for and I felt like if I just did it one more time, I could get the colors right, so that looks good, actually. Um, I'll definitely be sticking with this second one, even though this one also fits in its spot very well. Right here in this flower bush. It's a, it's a little warped, but you can, you can see it's just not the right color. So if I could get this one in instead, that would be nice. I also have this one, which was turning out good until I accidentally forgot where it was and I like leaned my arm onto it and it was stuck to my arm. So it's it's warped, it's, it's ruined, and I, I think I could have done better with the art anyway. So I gave it a second shot and I actually overfiled this one. So uh, that one looks like this. Here's the first one. It fits okay. I just wasn't happy with the texture. You can always do better a second time. And I, uh, I did a decent drawing, but then I overfiled it, so it actually wiggles around a lot in there. I also forgot to put a nail polish layer on it, 
so the pigment faded as I was holding on to it, which is why it is so important to put a top layer of nail polish to secure your art while you're handling it. But then, of course, you also run the risk of holding it too, too much, uh, getting some warmth in there, and uh, causing a bubble effect, which is not pretty. I definitely wanted to give this one another shot, even though I'm seeing some bubbles. It's not nearly as bad as this one is, and I can definitely do a better job. You do have to be a bit patient for this whole process. This piece was as dark as I could get it. Even if I used black, it still kind of came out a little red, but I'm not going to redo it because this piece is such a pain to file down. And it does move around a little bit. Um, it doesn't fit perfectly flesh to those corners, but I was able to get it sounded down enough that it does fit. So these corners are going to take a beating when you're trying to get down into the center here. Just do what makes you happy. So long as your piece uh, fits in the puzzle and your puzzle looks complete at a distance, I think it's totally worth it. But I think a uh, flawed piece is better than no piece at all. After you're done sanding all your pieces, feel free to use another layer or two of the nail polish to give it a nice smooth finish. Um, you'll always want to wait a while between layers or you will end up with air bubbles that will ruin your puzzle piece. So for this, this little guy, that I just showed you. You're gonna want to get a nice healthy coat of of polish to round them off and give them a sort of like bulbous texture and just keep it out of the way so you don't accidentally lean on it like I did with one of my other pieces. <laughs> so I wanted to show you guys the final product. My pieces might be a little glossier than the rest of them and sometimes the colors will be off but hey like I said, an off-color piece is better than no piece at all. You can see how it doesn't necessarily fit everywhere, but that's fine. Got another one here. This one looks pretty good. I'm much happier with that one than my first one. And this little guy over here. Not as dark as he needed to be, but that's okay. They're all so beautiful. I love it. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope that you've been inspired to return all your unfinished puzzles to their former glory. If you have any questions or tips on how to improve my methods, please share them in the comment section below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.